Good morning, everyone. Allison Carlson here again in the morning talking to you about health, chiropractic, exercise, nutrition. I am here to help you and answer your questions. So um, a really good question that I had was, how do you know whether to use ice or heat? So um, like always, if you're watching the live, say hi. Tell me that you're watching the live. If you watch the replay, put in hashtag replay and um, put in any of your health questions and I will just add them to my list. So um, ice versus heat. I have this question in the office all the time. Um, and I think that uh, I, I will say, first and foremost, if you do not listen to um, the rest of this video, I always default to ice. Um, you can do less damage with ice. There's less, um, I, I always say, ice is too cold for you to overdo it usually, right? So um, if when in doubt, always use ice in my opinion. Now, um, so... One way to think about this is you use ice for a new injury, so um, an ankle sprain for, uh, I don't know, maybe you you moved and did a lot of lifting and your back hurts, um, bruising you use ice, a tendonitis you would use ice. Um, for heat, that is for a chronic or an old or some type of a non-inflammatory pain. So maybe you've had back pain for years, neck pain for years, um, arthritis, those would be heat type of things. The reason being is heat increases blood flow to the area and if we have active swelling going on, we don't want to increase blood flow there. So um, I remember years ago I was skiing and I like twisted my knee or something, I don't know. And I went to like the medics um, at the bottom of the hill and skiing, you know, it's very common. Oh, sorry, here's my puppy. Um, it's very common that you, um, sorry guys, that you uh, sit in the hot tub at night. And so they said, yeah, no hot tub while we're getting um, swelling in, active swelling in that knee. Um, so ice, if it's new, I usually say stick with ice for the first three days and then you can do heat after that. Um, I know textbook wise that's a little bit longer, but I would always rather err on the side of caution. Um, and then you can probably use heat after that. Now with um, ice, we also want to elevate the affected area. So we talked about my son's ankle sprain. He would ice and we would do an ice bath, which I really like ice baths for the hands and the feet because then we can get the cold all the way around it and then the cold like grows together and we can get the deepest penetration um, with, with an ice bath. But then after he would get done icing, then we would elevate it. Now, if any of you guys have 13-year-olds around, I had to be very specific. When you elevate, it has to be above your heart, not just two inches off the ground, okay? Um, we ice and heat for 10 to 15 minutes. And then you can do it as often as you want, but I want your skin temperature to go back to normal before you do it again. So if you ice for 15 minutes, for example, and then maybe it's gonna take 45 minutes for your skin temperature to be totally normal, then you can ice again, and you can just cycle through doing that all day long. Um, the, uh, for, for heat, there is an exception exception if you take a bath so you can use a bath or like a hot tub for heat you can do that for about 30 minutes 
Um, but again, we're not going to do heat for like an acute ankle sprain, um, for tendonitis, if you fell and say fell on your knee and bruised your knee, we wouldn't want to do heat for that. But for like an arthritis or a back pain, you could do a hot tub or a bath and you can do that up to 30 minutes um, before you're causing swelling in the area and doing more harm than good. Now, another, um, the, the last thing that I, I hear this a lot in my office, I'll have patients that come in with low back pain and they tell me that they sleep on their heating pad the entire night. And I always say, okay, I, like you can't do that anymore. And that'll probably reduce half of your pain because they're sleeping, say, say they only sleep for six hours, but you can only have heat on for a maximum of 15 minutes before you cause swelling in the area. So if they're sleeping with that on for six hours, it might feel good at the time, but when they wake up in the morning, they're really stiff. So no more sleeping on your heating pads, okay? So ice heat, 10 to 15 minutes maximum. Ice we use um, on new injuries. Heat we use on things that we've had before, things that we've had for a long time, things that don't have any bruising or swelling. Those are two good um, rules of thumb to help guide you. But again, like I said in the beginning, when in doubt, always use ice. All right. Hopefully you found today helpful. Let me know what questions you guys have. I'm loving these morning videos and helping you and your responses. Um, so use it to your advantage.